Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Let your mind be holy. God's fire. Many of you do not know that there is a way to relate with things. You can relate with things wrongly. The same way you relate with God wrongly, you relate with men wrongly, you can relate with things. Things there mean all kinds of material possessions. There is an art, there is a technology to relating with things in a way that it benefits you and does not leave you miserable. Charge them, it says, that are rich in this world. Please look up that they may not be high-minded. Are you seeing the side effect of wealth and riches? Nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. That is already a beautiful scripture. So we are not in confusion as to the fact that God gives us all things to enjoy. Verse 18. That they do good. Is someone learning now? That they use the things that have been given to them to do good and they be rich in good works ready to distribute willing to communicate 19 laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come make reference to my teaching the law of seasons that they may lay hold on eternal life 20 it says timothy Keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. The last verse, 21, it says, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with you, amen. Now, please look up. He's teaching his son in the gospel, Timothy, how to deal with things. He's saying the moment you begin to have access to things, influence material riches there are certain things that begin to happen to you and if you do not know how a spiritual man relates to material things it can tear you into pieces that at the end of your life like judas the money that you have will not bless you you will lose the money lose your relationship with jesus and even lose your life are we learning one more scripture. First John chapter 2, a popular scripture from verse 15 and 16. First John 2, 15 and 16. Love not the world. The word loved here is the Greek word eros. Lost. An ungodly affinity. Love not the world. Neither the things. Are you seeing there now? The things that are in the world. That means he's not saying don't have cars and houses and things that make your life comfortable. The word love there means do not develop an ungodly affinity. An affinity that you can kill for money. You can kill for things. It does not matter. If any man love the world in that similitude, the love of the father is not in him. Are we learning? Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Please look up. Something begins to happen to men when they start succeeding. I can tell you that. It is easier to become successful than to remain successful. The dynamics of managing things is such that if God does not help you, you will lose your life, your character, your integrity, everything that makes you you intrinsically. You can lose it in the presence of plenty. The misbehavior of the people in Jesus' crusade came after they ate bread. When they were hungry, they behaved themselves. They said, let them sit down. They all sat down. The moment they ate and they were full, they scattered bread all around the crusade ground and left. When they gathered it, it was 12 baskets full. Something happens to men in the midst of plenty. I understand your correct behavior right now because you are probably owing or there's something happening. But when you get to a point where you have plenty, you are not limited by anything. That is when you see the potential that is in the hearts of men. Pride, a haughty spirit and so on and so forth. Please look up. Let me teach you something. 
the secret to managing things is to never exalt them above Jesus number two understand that every blessing that God gives you is for your comfort for the revelation of Jesus to help you become a blessing to humanity never exalt any material thing above Jesus don't have a garage for your car a safe for your jewelries and yet not have a place to meet with God I'm not teaching you to be careless with things but as God blesses you like he has done for many of us and he's doing for many the implication of open doors is that among the many blessings that come to you is plenty for a man of God here maybe you are at a prophetic point in your ministry right now where God is about to expand you and increase you with increase comes the burden of management and correct relationship you can relate wrongly with things by making them God in your life. That was the mistake of the rich fool. He made money his God. There are people money is their God today. There are people certificates is their God. There are people, their, their pedigree and whatever it is is their God. Some of the greatest people I've met in my life are people who are extremely humble, godly, very honoring in the midst of plenty. It is my prayer even for myself that as God continues to help me and show me his mercy that all these things that distract people and produce pride great man of God great deeds, that those things will be far from the corridors of my life say amen for me amen. and I pray the same prayer for you too sincerely let me tell you the truth many of you here have been blessed by God at different levels some of you have been extremely blessed to the glory of God all together we owe ourselves a responsibility. You are a man of God. You are a businessman. You are a millionaire. You are a billionaire. You are watching from across the globe. An owner of conglomerates. Thank God for your achievements. We do not downplay it. But let me tell you, there is a healthy way we relate with things. The believer in Christ has rules of engagement. You don't engage with things as though they are your life. My money. That is the language of an unbeliever my house my car my business i am a millionaire i'm a billionaire not just as a confession of the word but just to rub it into people and you demand all kinds of human worship because of it you are relating wrongly if you are blessed you are blessed you don't have to rub it on the faces of people most of the people who do that are just at their infancy into the wealthy place i can tell you People who are established there, you know it by the character of stability. They, they, they use others more superior parameters to command respect, not resources. Are we together? It is my prayer. I'm saying it again. And I'm praying for everybody here sincerely. Some of us may need to tame our pride and our attitude towards things. Your life, your relationship with God changed. Many things went wrong in your life when the blessing began to come. While you were trekking, you were moving. No, nothing. You see, one of the ways that you manage things is to remember where he took you from. Always remember. Thou shall remember. Koinonia, we are wrapping up. Do not forget this. Man of God, thou shall remember. I still remember the days of infancy of this ministry absolutely nothing blind trust in Jesus and that was it I remember one of the major financial blessings that came to this ministry that time was 20,000 a lady gave so that we we'll buy mat instead of sitting on the ground do not forget where God took you from Apostle I'm a billionaire you are not the first you will not be the last and don't be part of the many lessons that 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 others are learning from negatively if God has blessed you and he has helped you enjoy the blessings of God but let your heart and your mind be on Jesus that you can push that car you can push all those things, the, the estates and everything. And people look at you and say, ah, man of God, as great as you are, 
It's as if you don't like good things, Abi. Run away from them. They may be sincere, but they are leading you to the path of, of deception. You're the king of my life. That was why I wrote this song. It was around a Valentine period, just around this period. That was when I wrote this song many years ago. Listen to it. It says, King of my life, you are my own. And I live for you alone. You're the king of my life. You have my all. And I lay my life for you. My heart is yours. My mind is yours. My will is yours. You're the king of my life. You're the king of my life. My heart, my heart is yours. My mind is yours. My mind is yours. My will is yours. You're the king of my life. You're the king of my life. Beyond cars and houses. You're the king of my life. Beyond ministry, businesses. You're the king of my life beyond prestige and pedigree. Listen, hear me. As the doors begin to open because of this key of relationships, make sure you sing this song as you walk through them. Let the doors hear you make your declaration. As you walk through the doors of enviable prosperity, the blessings of the nation given to you in one day, somebody's prayer request of five years being given to you in a moment at the instance of relationship don't just collect it as these doors and the blessings come my final word and let it be my valentine gift to you my dear people is make sure you walk through those doors singing don't sing i will sing it to you dedicated to you now even though to jesus king of my life you are my own and i live for you alone you're the king of my life you have my own and i lay my life for you my heart is yours my mind is yours, my will is yours, you're the king of my life, you're the love of my life. Walk through the doors of prosperity singing this song. Walk through the doors of influence singing this song. Walk through the doors of lifting singing this song. When men want to distract you by singing another song that makes you the God of the process, respectfully shut them and tell them I was mentored properly before the door opened. The song will always be about him. The lifting and the accolades and the applause will always be about him. I am satisfied that he has made me a beneficiary of these open doors. 
because I give you a guarantee by the integrity of God. You put what you have heard today, you will sit down and watch as though holding a charm. Doors open that you cannot begin to explain. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. By the privilege of God's grace and without any sense of sounding arrogant, I know what I am telling you. What I am teaching you are not calling it device fables. You use the door of relationships with God, with men, and with things. You have mastered the art of knocking. You will knock on doors and men will open it. Even if it is by 12 midnight, you will meet them and say, a friend has come, save me from shame. And they will say, you are a friend indeed. Here I come. With their blessings, many of you will have relationships give you houses you did not build. Many of you will have relationships sponsor your children till university. Many of you will have relationships as a currency give you lands you did not buy. It is true. You don't have to be a Christian to believe the logic and intelligence of what I'm saying. It is not only a spiritual principle, it is a universal principle. Do not have money alone. Use part of that money to buy relationships. Write this finally and then we'll pray. Write this finally and then we'll pray. Please make sure you write it. Everyone, please write this. This is my final word concluding on this teaching. Are you ready? Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Please write it down. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. The second thing I want you to write, please. Wisdom and favor gives you access to men and systems. Your relationship with God will give you access to wisdom and favor wisdom and favor in your life as a twin combo will give you access to men and systems men number three now will give you access to resources and influence i'm showing you how it works i'm deconstructing the dynamics of open doors through relationships that it starts from God. Your relationship with God will give you access to wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor will give you access to men and systems. Men will now give you access to resources and influence. You see how it happens. God will give you true riches, wisdom and favor. You trade wisdom and favor and he gives you men access to the hearts of men with men in your life will come resources and influence these are the two things you get from men and then number four you now use your resources and the influence to serve God to bless men and to live a successful life that recycles the process again you use your resources and your influence to serve God, comma, bless men, and to live a successful life. The cycle continues. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor gives you access to men and systems. Men will now give you access to resources and influence. When those resources come and the influence that comes through men, you now use it to serve God. You use it to bless men again. You use it to live a successful life. And part of living a successful life is to give you more room and accommodation to maintain and increase your relationship with God. In chemistry, we have and biology and agriculture we have all kinds of circles water circle is that true we have all kinds of things this is a spiritual circle that I've described for you if you plunge yourself into this circle there is no depletion for your life it is God wisdom and favor 
men and influence resources with those resources you use them as tool to serve God you use them as tools to bless men then you use them as tools to live a successful life ladies and gentlemen I present to you by God the art of knocking this is how we knock doors in life show me a man that pays attention to this and I show you a man who has left his current level regardless your background this is one of the mysteries whose results show instantly there are mysteries that the results may take time but I guarantee you this one can speak immediately in your life can we pray for two or three minutes rise up on your feet we are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do Sad going to pray one prayer point which will be a combination of everything I just summarized for you Lord my relationship with you and let wisdom and favor come from that relationship and with wisdom and favor I obtain grace oh God to be able to win the heart of men valuable relationships and with valuable relationships oh God let resources come and with resources again the wisdom to serve you the wisdom to bless my world to live a successful life and then it gives me an opportunity to spend time knowing you and building my relationship again lift your voice and begin to pray everywhere inside outside all of the overflow open your mouth and begin to pray to Jesus Doors of prosperity open through relationships. Doors of increase. Doors of ministry. Magnificent doors of the anointing. Just one minute. Go ahead and pray. By this teaching tonight, God has shown some of us where we need to make adjustments in our lives. opening destiny doors through relationships it says for everyone that knock it it shall be open you may not be the one to open it but the other person behind will open the door for you pray that you will never have to confess like the man at bethesda i have no man god will bring men to your life God will empower you. Relationships that speak for you at the gates. Obtain grace. Obtain grace. Now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Father, I obtain grace to invest in my relationship with you. I obtain grace to invest in my relationship with men. I obtain grace to carefully and spiritually relate to and with things in a way that it never takes your place in my life. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm going to make an altar call right now very quickly please even if it's just to honor Jesus let me plead that we minimize movement it will not take more than two three minutes and we're out of here you are here tonight and whilst you heard me speak 
the first dimension of relationship, you know you are found wanting there. In the order of priority, relating with men will not matter much if your relationship with Jesus is found wanting. And then inevitably you will relate wrongly with things in a way that destroys you. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, in this season of love and relationship, I do not want to go back the way I came. I want to make it right with the Lord Jesus. Perhaps you are here, you are saying, I really want to rededicate my life. I've been around church, but I really did not know what I was doing. But now I have heard your word and I want to make it right. Can I tell you, with every sense of love and passion in my heart and our hearts as a family of faith across the globe and in this place, I want you to give me the honor to invite you to come and stand here. I'm going to count one to five, wherever you are, the lover of your soul, the shepherd of your destiny, one who loves you regardless and in spite of, is giving you room to make it right. You can choose to reject him, but he's calling you. Come, I begin my counting now. One, come. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. Pick your Bibles, your bags, everything you came to church with and come. Come, God bless you. Koinonia, let's, let's celebrate them. Come to Jesus. Nothing to be ashamed of at all. Keep clapping. Let's encourage them as they come. Those who are connecting from across the globe, Jesus is calling you. He's giving you a new beginning. Come. Please come, we're wrapping up already. And we're standing here, it's only because you may. My brothers and my sisters, listen, let me tell you. When we come to Jesus sincerely just as we are, he receives us, we receive of his life, and that begins a new journey. Some of you are rededicating your life to Jesus. Some of you are making this decision for the first time. There is absolutely nothing to be ashamed and afraid of. I don't know what your life may have been, but I want you to know that he's able to give you a new beginning. And for someone who is following online, watching by way of television, as I lead them to pray, I want you to join them right where you are. Experience the love of Jesus genuinely and sincerely. Thank you very much for making this noble decision. May I request that you raise your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and please say this from the depth of your heart say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i declare that i love you with all my heart i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i receive the life of god i receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and i declare that from tonight I go forward ever and backward never. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I receive grace to live a victorious Christian life. Amen. Please keep your dear hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious people. They have come making declarations of faith and the bible declares that as many who will come to him to you you will in no wise cast away i pray by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven and that tonight and forever they become bona fide recipients of your life i declare over you that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your lives 
from tonight you walk in newness of life you are the righteousness of God in Christ in Jesus mighty name I pray Amen and amen. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh,